Our guest in this first segment is the Senate President and uh, slash Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Craig Blair. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to your listeners. <laughs> I just had a flashback. I knew Bill, uh, I've been to your home before. Yeah, and, under uh, the house. And, yeah, and <laughs> I've actually seen you working before with a T-shirt on and everything. <laughs> and it took me places I didn't want to go. <laughs> Come on, Craig. Come on. We all have our secrets. <laughs> you should imagine being Joe Ferretti the first time he met Billy was getting out of the shower. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, I've been walk- known to walk out and get the newspaper in my underwear. My wife goes, really? And I go, there's nobody around. <laughs> well, that was the old day. You, there's a lot of growth around your house now. Uh, to, to where I'm at, yeah. there, there's still not. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to, there's a lot of traffic on Ridge Road, yeah. though. Yeah. A tremendous amount of traffic. Yeah. So, Let's talk about the election cycle coming up. You are going to run for Senate again. Yes. Uh, I decided that I want to run for Senate again. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, look, there's a, still a lot of things to do. And I'm extremely proud of it. Back in 2003 is when I first ran for office, and it was over workers' comp. We were able to fix that. We've been able to fix a lot of things. I've spent my life fixing stuff. And, uh, yes, it's, it's very satisfying when you can see the change and see things happen. Uh, and so I'm good at it. I'm good at getting people at the table, solving the problems. We do this every other week. The governor's chief of staff, governor's office, actually, and the House of Delegates and the Senate, we get together and we keep talking about it. Uh, Even though we're only a 60-day session, a part-time legislature, the business of the state continues on. And so I, I am thrilled about the results that we're getting. And but there's still more to do. Uh, the DHHR is a prime example of that. That is, uh, we've just taken the first step, and it's going to be a five-year process of being able to unwind that and get that to being an efficient agency that does what it needs to do. Particularly in my case of foster care, I have a lot of concerns about foster care, so that's driving that. But to, but let's get back local, and of. Route 9 West, it needs to be addressed. It, it's got to be addressed. You've got to have the resources to be able to do it as well. And uh, we put significant extra revenues out of general revenue into the road fund over the last, what, three or four years, something like that. And uh, there will be more coming. I anticipate another $150 million being transferred this year from the excess revenues over into the road fund. Is there a federal match for a Route 9 project? Uh, did, did, we're working on that. Most cases, yes. There are federal matching dollars, and we are always looking at that, uh, stretching the dollars. Uh, and that applies to just about everything that we do. Uh, if, if Delicate Height here came and he wanted uh, to do help the senior center, I'm just going to use that one, we look for matching dollars. Uh, that way there's skin in the game. What happens is that you get better results with the money that you spend. It used to be it just got fanned out to wherever anybody they asked if you were well connected, you got the money. And that's not the way it works anymore. We want to see that return on investment. We want to know that it's going to benefit that community or the state, whatever it may be. And, it, and it's a hallmark. Uh, that that is in place right now for us on how we go about doing things. And that's how you end up with the excess revenues like we do. Billy? Yeah, uh, you mentioned 2003, you ran for office first time. Who was your opponent in that delegate race? Jerry Mace. Jerry Mace. Oh, did, well, did yeah. that, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking. Yeah, no, no. I, and what I, what I was getting at, uh, leading up to, you and Jerry, I don't think really knew each other uh, well before that race. And both of them ran a very clean, positive race. And I think after the race, you and Jerry were the closest of friends uh, uh, through the years. So it, it was an example of where a political race can pull people together as opposed to separating. Jerry Mace was a class act. Yeah. Of and actually, he heard that I was thinking about running, yeah. even though he was running. Called me up and said, "Look, we're having a training class on what to do. I'd like for you to come to that." 
of and then as we went on of if i'd have known who he was i might not have ran yeah and of and he said the same thing about me we had utmost respect yeah then when you went into the general election my name's craig p blair and i ran against a man named craig p shibley and uh, that that was an interesting yeah. dynamic. That's so when you asked yeah, that question, yeah. that's why there no, was a pause. Yeah, yeah. And, no, I was thinking about Jerry Mays race. Yeah, I, I yeah. wasn't sure where you yeah. were going, yeah. which direction. Hey, before we get too much yes. further, Rob, I've got something to present to you this morning. This is a book of all the bills that got done and the summaries of during this legislative session. It's hot off the press, of and then also. Now, this is the one that I'm most proud of. This is since the Republicans took over in 2015. This is bill after bill after bill that makes it so that we're attractive to business. There's over 900 pages wow. of bills in here. I'm going to give you this because it will help you and your your host here understand a lot of the things we've done. You can actually go in there. There's a topical index in the front of it to where you can go and look. Yes, it's thick. I use this. If you got a new core or Procter & Gamble or whoever is sitting in my office that's saying, we want to come to West Virginia, I want them to know that of all the things, this here signifies what we've been doing to make it so that you can come to West Virginia, create jobs, and have those opportunities. And when you do that, you grow the tax base. You grow the tax base, you got the infrastructure. You can take care of education. This is one of our key ingredients on being able to get things done. Over 1,700 regulations taken off the books so that you can operate your business effectively. When we had Steve Roberts on, the president of the West Virginia Chamber, he cited the uh, right to work law passage as uh, pretty much the keystone for everything else that has happened in West Virginia because in, according to him that was one of the main objections companies moving into West Virginia would bring up or one of the things they wanted to make sure West Virginia became a right to work state. Uh, rate that one in regards to the thickness of that book as to the importance of that uh, passage of that law. It's in top 20. <clears throat> it's it's in the top 20. Is it important? Absolutely, it's important. And I get asked that all the time. Uh, but to, to, and it, but it, it's a good bill. But you know what was more important? Workers' comp. And that took place before the Republicans took over. Uh, but to, if that wouldn't have taken place, we would have been in greater dire straits at that point in time. In 2003, when I was elected, the general revenue budget was right around $2.6 billion, and workers' comp was $4.2 billion in debt. And there was really no method to go on or effort to change anything. And it was corrupt from top to bottom, everybody uh, involved with it. We got the state out of that business. It took a 10-year process to do it. But we got it out, and now we're seeing the benefits from that. I assure you, Procter & Gamble, Nucor, Commercial Metals, they wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for that. And another thing that has been extremely important is the pension system. Our pension system is one of the best funded in the nation. No business is going to locate someplace where your pensions are 6 and 10% funded. If they are, then they're going to say, you're going to end up taxing me and whether I make a profit or not, you're going to tax me for this to pay for the sins of the past. What business wants to come to where you're going to end up paying for the sins of the past? We're, fi we're fixing these things, and it's getting it right. So I I I'm very proud of it, but then this is a component. And some of the things seem also small, but they're very important to one segment or another of our industries and businesses that we have here. And what... And and wasn't it wonderful, the woman that just retired after 62 years? 62 years. Parsons I was yeah. born one year before that, and I consider myself an old man of uh, right now. But it, 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 but it demonstrates the work ethic uh, that this woman had, and we should uh, honor that. And we, we and they are. Uh, they did, yeah. But, but going out and working and contributing of to our community being part of the greater good that that that's so so important so my hat's off to her 
Craig, points well taken, and I agree with that. Uh, you've also mentioned two or three things that uh, the state has done to encourage businesses to come to the state, uh, and I think we're seeing the results of it. Are there, is there something else? Or are there other things that we need to that we as a state need to do to make it even more enticing to businesses to come? Yes. And of one of them is when it comes to unemployment. We need to index our unemployment. Of un- right now, West Virginia is higher than most other states when it comes to the unemployment premiums. It's paid by the employer and only by the employer. What we need to do is index that so that when the unemployment rate's lower, then you've got shorter time that you can be on unemployment. And then if unemployment's high, then you can spend a longer period of time. We've got more jobs out here than what we've got people right now. And even though there's less than seven people drawing an unemployment check right now, it's still something you need to fix it when you've got a low amount of people on there. And then you need to – but lowering that premium – that people pay on that unemployment makes it so that more businesses will grow and and expand here. And when I talk about new businesses, I should say that we need to also take our economic development and break it in half. And we're we're doing some of that right now with Senator or Secretary Mitch Carmichael, and uh, because a lot of your job growth comes from existing businesses that are already here and you want to facilitate that they're already committed to West Virginia you want to make it so that they can be profitable so that they can grow their business Uh, but the new ones make the big splash of when they're coming in and it sends a message out to corporate America we're going to Seattle here of to meet with Amazon of at the end of June and there's a whole team, and we've been doing this now for the last two years. And it's been very, very effective when we go out and we sell West Virginia and what we got to offer. And we are a shining star right now. We are attractive. When I travel throughout this country, and actually the world for that matter, people are coming up and ask, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? And then it didn't used to be that way. And it feels really good when you sit there and say, well, we did this and this, and this is how we got the result, and it worked. And and i got to add, the flatline budget. Contract, and we talked about this at the beginning of the show. I'm so tired of hearing about increasing the debt ceilings in the national government. What they need to do is say, we're not spending any more money than what this is. You, the revenue growth will continue to grow. But what it will do is allow you to squeeze out the efficiencies in the agencies that are out there. And then you've got excess money left over. So if there's a hot spot, there's something that truly does have need, you go back in and plug it in. You put that money in. That's exactly what we're doing in West Virginia. And we're getting it right. Mike Height. I'm I'm going to applaud you that there's a lot of good things that have happened since you've been in the legislature and, and under your leadership in the Senate. Um, but it does my heart good to hear you talk about Route 9 West. That's in my district. It's in your district. And uh, I felt like something needs to be done about that for a long time. And I've been barking about it since I got into the legislature. Uh, even went over and had a meeting with uh, uh, Secretary Riston, um, who may as well say just get out of my office this isn't going to happen so my question to you is how do you make that i mean obviously you have a whole lot more leadership and input than i do but how do you make that happen as the senate president it's harder to tell the former finance chairman who understands the budget well and the senate president of no to something now the problem is is that i'm still caught on how do you pay for it sure and so one of the this comes back to what 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 i was talking about earlier if you grow your tax base you get more businesses here you get more people working here you keep our best and brightest from leaving the state and that's our the people that were graduating from our universities our ctc's and our high schools and you give them gainful employment in the state of west virginia now you grow the tax base to be able to have the money to put into infrastructures whether it's roads water sewer 
broadband, all those things come into play. But we're getting there. I anticipate that we're going to have excess revenues next year that will exceed a billion dollars. But keep in mind that we are it's not going to be as high as what it was this year. The uh, fossil fuel prices are dropping somewhat, so the severance tax will go down on that. Of, But, oh, my God, I lost my train of thought. This is the getting old part. <laughs> well, uh, well, let me follow you, up. I why mean, are you looking at me, Craig? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, I, you'll get no sympathy from Stubblefield on this. You've got 20 years to go to get there. So, okay. But you've got to have that tax base to be able to put the infrastructure in. And, to, and to, to keep in mind, that the rest of West Virginia, a lot of it is – They've been underemployed. Uh, they've been hurting for years. And when you lift them, it actually frees up the resources so that we can do some of the things here. It used to be whenever you were the Senate president or you were the speaker or the finance chairman, you gathered, you scrounged up all the money, the excess money, and you took it to your district. That is not how we went about doing things here in the state. I've said what's good for West Virginia is great for the Eastern Panhandle. And it has worked, and it is working. And so when you lift up the rest of the state, then it makes it so that we've got the resources to come back home and be, do, some, do some of the things that we need to do here. And there's been $50 million transferred to or going to be transferred to water and sewer of, into Berkeley County. Well, I think that's one of the things that the rest of the state doesn't realize. Because we are the economic engine of, of the state right now, the eastern panhandle is, and we're growing faster than anybody else. And with that comes problems, infrastructure problems. So we need $50 million for, for water and, and things like that, and we need the infrastructure in the roads. Um, and while I see certain things happening with I-81 and down around Inwood, um, this this particular Route 9 project has been on the books for 40 years, and it seems like they we've just kicked the can down the road. Now, Secretary Riston says this is a, a $2 billion project that make this happen. Mm -hmm. So even at 20%, you can check my math, I, we're still talking about $400 million from the state. So... Does the state have that kind of money to put into the road fund for a project here in the Panhandle? Well, what you're going to do is look for local money too, if you can, to, and to put a mechanism in place so that the locals can actually contribute to that. That's going to be part of the component. We're looking at how we can make it so that if counties has got a revenue stream that they want to be able to help put money into it in one way or another, then the state comes in, then the feds come in to be able to get things done. Keep in mind, if it's four hundred million dollars, we've got four hundred million dollars parked in over in the personal income tax, rainy day fund, reserve fund, whatever you call it, and it's unnecessary mm -hmm. because of how we structured our tax reform this year. And by the way, that I'm very proud of that, and I would do, and make no mistake, I would have rather done Amendment 2 of, and got the personal property tax on equipment, machinery, and inventory so that we could have grown the tax base faster so that we could have reduced the personal income tax. That way, that's not the cards that was dealt. So the cards that are dealt to, uh, to us is is that we did a $750 million tax relief to the people and businesses of West Virginia across the board, not just the workers, but our seniors also, because they all have automobiles as well. It's going to work. It just doesn't work as fast as what Amendment 2 would do. But we're still growing our economy. What's going to take place in Mason County? is going to make another county where they're going to have excess revenues that's going to be coming into the state coffers because of what's going on with Nucor and then the Berkshire Hathaway work. There's a lot of good things taking place. I am personally exposed right now to $30 billion worth of investment that can potentially come to West Virginia. And I think it will be coming to West Virginia. We are, and that's one of the roles I do. Uh, the, they can end up in my office and having questions about something, and uh, I'll get on the phone and I'll say, Mitch, get over here. I need to talk to you. Or Brian Abraham from the governor's office, come upstairs. We've got somebody in here. I need you to talk to him. Within five or ten minutes, we've got a group of people sitting in the office talking about that. You know what kind of impression that, that makes to somebody that's thinking about coming to West Virginia? It's huge. 
That doesn't happen if we don't all work together and being able to be part of a team. And it's become contagious. It has really been that way. The agency, Jimmy Riston, will stop what he's doing, and if it's got to do with roads, up he comes. And uh, we, it's you can see the smile on my face. Uh, it, it is very satisfying when you got everybody working together and running the boat in the same direction. Real Greg, quick, I, I'm, go ahead, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to switch gears real quick. The, the, our state right now, of all the good things that are happening, we're still in a state of emergency over the, the corrections crisis. So. I know there's work going on behind the scenes. Maybe you could elaborate. Where are we with that? I know it's it's a, an issue where we just don't want to throw money at it. We want to get it right from top to bottom. So where are we with that, and how do we get this fixed? Okay, of every other Tuesday, and I started this uh, three meetings ago, of and I get everybody into the room, whether it's the judicial branch, corrections, of the speaker, the governor's office, of the Senate, and we all come in there and have discussions about what's going on. We realize that we're not going to be able to address this, excuse me, until uh, probably August. August is going to be when we have our next interim meetings, and we're going to probably run a uh, special session over top of that. We believe that we're going to be able to have everything put together by then. Now, is there going to be pay raises involved? Yes. But uh, the speaker and I both were adamant that we're not going to just throw money at the problem. There are a phenomenal amount of things that come into play that increases the role. In fact, the next meeting, there are going to be people coming from Berkeley County because Berkeley County has been one of the best counties in the state that has done a great job of reducing their regional jail cost, reducing the, and working with the city, working with the courts. And uh, I spoke of day before yesterday uh, to the, all the circuit judges and intermediate appellate court judges and the Supreme Court judges, and we talked about this also, that we all realize that, yes, we're separate branches, but that doesn't preclude you from being able to talk to each other and say, if you do this, we can have a better outcome. And to, to be quite honest with you, that's one of the things I think I'm most proud of. I'm the guy that says, Get this person in the room. Get that person in the room. We're going to come up with a solution to this rather than pointing fingers at each other and talking past each other. Uh, if you got everybody in the room at one time and then we, we have those discussions, well, if you do this, and this will cause this problem over here. So, And then you say, well, maybe that's not the brightest out of the deal. But lots of times you'll say, if we do this, and they're sitting there saying, yes, and if we modify it, we can actually do this also and make it so that we got a better result. I'm not getting into specifics on this, and the reason for it is, is when you're in the middle of specifics, then d d d I'm, we're still negotiating out and trying to figure out everything that's going on. But I think that uh, when it comes to the pay schedules and everything, that part of it to a greater degree is worked out. We, but we see uh, ways in the courts. I'll give you one example, and that is they hire about 600 in, in correctional employees a year. And of those 600, about 300 of them quit within the first year. And the reason for it is they thought that it was something they wanted to do, and they got in there and they realized it wasn't. We spent $16,000 a year or excuse me, $16,000 an individual. Multiply 16,000 times 300 because they left. It's $4.8 million of wasted money each year. So why not take these future employees, get them in and do a ride along, uh, to being in the facility for a period of time to see what the job is actually like before you commit to spending $16,000 in training on them. That is going to be something that's going to get done. It frees up $4.8 million that you can actually move over to do other things. Craig, we are just about out of time. Uh, if you missed it at the beginning, Craig, the uh, 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 no purpose of this was Craig announcing he will run again for uh, state Senate. And the real elections in West Virginia now are in the primary for most of the offices in the state. 
And that's the Republican primary because the Democrats as a party statewide and locally just don't have enough candidates to even fill all the slots on a ballot, let alone be viable candidates that are electable in this state. So your challenge really is going to be in the primary. You had a pretty close primary last time. Your general was not close, but your primary is pretty close last time. What are you expecting this time? Well, part of my problem with the primary last time was is that I didn't do a whole lot. I only put three signs out, two in my front yard and one in Charlie Trump's. Uh, and, then, and Charlie was going to vote for you anyway. Yeah, and did, and did one. No, he's got a good location in Berkeley Springs. Uh, but the fact is, is that I was working uh, on on the other candidates races that were out there. Uh, remember that Mitch Carmichael uh, was on the ballot, and I do a lot of work on being able to get good of team players to come in and work together in the Senate. Now, here's the main reason why you probably want me back. Of done a lot of good things, but I carry institutional knowledge. I can't believe this, but I'm the third longest senator, serving senator in the legislature, and it's only been 12 years. 2012 was when I was elected. Actually, it's 11 at this point in time. But they come to me all the time and say, what happened here? What happened there? Charlie Trump has institutional knowledge. When you have a turnover rate like the House of Delegates do, and ours is similar to where you've got 30 out of 100 new ones or 8 or 10 new senators out of 34, you come in green. That turnover takes place every two years. you got to have a little institutional knowledge to go along with it. Otherwise, the staff runs the show. And you can't have that happen. So, Are you uh, doing any uh, town halls or gatherings in uh, your district any time in the near future, Craig? I, I haven't planned any at this point in time. Can't remember that, that we're a year out even mm-hmm. from the primary election. Everything's starting early this year yeah. <laughs> of whether that you're running for U.S. Senate or, or governor or whatever. It's all started early. But, you know, it's a sign of a vibrant economy. It's a sign of people seeing that good things are happening in West Virginia. So I, I, I love the fact that we got strong primaries. I can remember when it was a struggle getting anybody. And by the way, it all began right here in the Eastern Panhandle where it was competitive in the Republican races before it did on virtually anywhere else in West Virginia. So the Eastern Panhandle is leading the state into the future. And I'm, again, I'm proud of that. You can see it by the leadership roles. Craig, of, do you, of the do you anticipate them. you'll have an opponent? Oh, yeah, I do. Do you have any idea who it may be? Oh, the, the, the way things are coming, it'll probably be Mike Folk. Okay. And, you know, he was in the House of Delegates. He ran for governor. He's all over the place. And bring it on. It, that, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, I've uh, heard I've heard Mike's name as well. So. Yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, to, 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 Again, I care less. Anybody can get into the race. I welcome it. Uh, it should be the value of, you know, you're, you're debating the issues and what's going on, and then whoever wins should carry those good ideas forward and do the best they can to implement them, whether you got elected or whether you didn't. And I've said that since day one when I first ran for office. I've learned a lot from other people. And it a lot I have learned from other people. And if they've got a good idea, seize it. If a Democrat's got a good idea, seize it. It doesn't make any difference. Make the world better that we live in. And it's like those sheets of paper that I just gave you, Rob. It started out with one, and one sheet of paper doesn't mean anything. That 900-page book is substantial. It says that we're making a difference. And I can't wait till I see that book that's a foot tall. West Virginia will be one of the number one ranked states in the union if that would be the case. Never quit improving yourselves. Craig, thanks for coming by. You're welcome. Thank you.